أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وآله الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله الحجة ابن الحسن فلوها أرواح العالمين واللعن الدائم على أعدائهم أبد الآبدين ودهر الداهرين اللهم كل وليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى أعضائه في هذه الساعة في كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه وارضك طوعا وتمتع فيها طويلا برحمتك يا رحم الرحمين We talked about how jurisprudential justice in Shia thought works and it's not about laws and legislations rather it's about what is haq and what is right and who is the criminal and who is not and that's why as a reason for what we say if a judge delivers a verdict that this woman is not the wife of that man in accordance to the available evidence that he had and then he finds out otherwise that that woman was actually the wife of what of that man and she gets married to another man the judge the Shia judge would go and tell her to go back to her first husband. And some scholars say if a verdict was delivered wrongly for any reason that the scholar should fix the situation. Why? Because it's about haq, not about rules only. Of course, to reach haq, sometimes you need rules. And the Prophet wasallam showed us the rule when he said, that I would deliver a verdict for you <coughs> in accordance to evidence and oaths. However, whoever a judge gives him a land, because he had the ability to talk, to bring evidence, to fabricate evidence. And the land was not, did not belong to him, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish him in day of judgment. Because <coughs> <coughs> Shia justice is about haq. And haq means what it is as it is. So this woman is the wife of that man. This child is the kid of that man or woman and etc. And that's why a judge cannot be anyone, even if he knows fiqh. Rather, he should be an experienced scholar who knows how he can uh, find haq uh, between wreckage. I can remember once I brought an example for my students. So a clever, sharp scholar who gained the experience by sitting next to a clever, sharp, wise judge for a long time, let's say a few years, when he gains knowledge and experience. And usually they don't do that. 
<clears throat> and this is the justice of Imam Ali alayhi salam. The justice of Imam Ali when he wanted to show haq to everyone. They brought <clears throat> a woman to the second Khalifa and they accused her with fornication. And Khalifa said, okay, lash her, hit her. And then Imam Ali was there and he said, okay, I'd like to ask her some questions. Why did you do that? There were some, you know, let's say, um, there were some witness and etc. Why should I ask why? Because Imam Ali wants to understand, to realize what's happening. To show, he knew. Of course, as an imam, he knew very well. <coughs> Jazakallah khair. But he wanted to show everyone as well. And she said, yes, I did it. Why? She said, because I was so thirsty. I was about to die. That's why I accepted to do fornication. Imam said, Allahu Akbar. Innaha bari'a. She's innocent. So it's not about what happened but also why it happened as well. Uh, and when you go to verdicts of Imam Ali alayhi salam, you can see too many stories that can show how Imam Ali alayhi salam used to find haq between wreckage. A young man went to Imam Ali alayhi salam and told him that my father's friend went with my father and <coughs> they came back and told me that your father passed away and he left nothing. He lost all of his money and wealth. And Imam Ali told him, okay, what do you think? He said, I think that uh, they might kill him and stolen his money and wealth. He said, okay, bring, he told his soldier to bring them to Imam Ali and they were, I think, four or five of them. They were taken to Imam Ali in the mosque and Imam Ali told uh, people of the mosque that whenever I say Allahu Akbar, you say Allahu Akbar, just after me. And then Imam Ali salam told them, okay, what's happened? They said, okay, yes, we went with the father of this guy, but he got sick and he passed away and he left nothing. He lost all of his money. He said, okay. Told Qambar to separate between them. Have you heard this story? To separate between them. And then <coughs> told Qambar to bring one of them and close their eyes, the rest the mosque of Kufa and uh, he told him okay what happened and he said yes we went with the father of this man young man which day where where did he die who uh, prayed on him who buried him was night time or morning time asked detailed question and then he said, okay, take him back and bring the second. And then Imam Ali salam said, Allahu Akbar, and the whole mosque said, Allahu Akbar. And then Imam Ali told bring the second one. And they brought the second one to Imam Ali salam, <coughs> and he had a pale face. Imam Ali looked at him and told him, do you think that I don't know what you did to the father of this guy? Straight away he replied, I was one of, the f one of them. It wasn't my decision, it wasn't my call. And Imam said, okay, tell me the story. <coughs> and he told him the story. <coughs> and Imam Ali Salam told, write down the story and close his eye and take him back and bring the third one. And he said, Imam Ali said, Allahu Akbar. Everyone said, Allahu Akbar. They brought the third one. And Imam then told him 
your friend uh, admitted and confessed and he's told us what he did and uh, that person as well accepted the crime and then Imam Ali after all of that brought the first one and told him your friends told us the story what about you and he told the story to Imam Ali salam. so Imam Ali salam used techniques to understand Haqq so it's not only about okay do you have evidence no I don't <clears throat> do you have witness? No, I don't. Sorry, I can't do anything to you. Let's go. It's about haq and batil. So such stories can show us that Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam want to tell us that Shia jurisprudential justice is about haq and what happened not only about rules and legislations when you pray it's about rules and legislations check you doubt it whether it's the second rak'ah or third rak'ah but you said it most probably is the third just say it's the third and finish it off <coughs> but in justice, Shia jurisprudence is not like that. It's about haq and batil. Any question? So we can move to the second. So this is the Shia judicial system to remove these witnesses? We're at scholars, yes. They have to. <coughs> <coughs> the second point is um, we are not allowed to help someone who's trying to manipulate a judge even if I'm a lawyer, lawyer and that would make it very hard for a lawyer to work as lawyer because in most cases they want him to fabricate. They want him to teach them. They want him to uh, help them manipulate the mind of the judge, and etc. It's very hard. This is the first point. And the second point is because of that we are not allowed to go to non-shia judges and non-shia courts unless if we cannot get our haq without going to such courts and such judges that's a different story a normal occasion normal stories you have to go shia scholar and that's it And who is Shia scholar? A mujtahid. Too many scholars believe that Shia judge should be a mujtahid. Why? Because he's using wilaya. For instance, sometimes he divorces a woman of her husband as a wali. When a normal situations it's up to the husband to divorce as the power of the husband to divorce his wife but if she is getting uh, oppressed she's not receiving enough nafaka and for instance or if the man is insulting her I've heard some scholars say even if the man, you know, had a bad manners, just swears at her and insults her and her tribe and as they say in Iraq, things like that, and she cannot tolerate that, she can go to the marja 
and he can divorce her of her husband if he doesn't accept to divorce her or to behave himself. So this is wilaya. So he's using power in accordance to what? If he's not mushtahid, doesn't have the knowledge in accordance to what? He's using uh, the power to Bukhara Ma'da as they say in Farsi. He has to have something. And that thing is knowledge. Knowledge will give him the power. The mandate. That's why too many scholars say that a judge should be mushtahid. <clears throat> should be mushtahid. Must be a mushtahid. Because without the power of wali al-faqih, fil umur al hasbiyya in such occasions, you're not allowed. Okay, there is a dispute about a land. And this land has part A and part B. Okay? And <clears throat> the inheritors, each one of them wants the part A. He should put an end to that dispute. And there is no difference between part A and part B. Then the mushtahid would say part A belongs to Ali and part B belongs to Hassan. To put an end to that dispute. In accordance to what? To knowledge. What is giving him that mandate? Knowledge. Knowledge. So if someone is not knowledgeable, how should he do that? Yet, I can say, some scholars such as Ayatollah Sayyid Sistani say even a muqallid can be a judge if he knows the rules very well. But that's arguable. Some scholars argue that. <coughs> they say how? If he's not mushtahid, how? What would give him the mandate, the power to use such force to impose laws of Islam, for instance, on people and etc. But anyway, <coughs> so if we believe then a judge should be a mushtahid, then you can understand the lack and the gap that we have in our society as Shia. How many mushtahid do you have that can be judge and judge between people? They are very limited. Mm -hmm. Then you can understand why we need more scholars, more mushtahids in our communities. And why we have too many existing disputes in the community. Because they don't know how to put an end to a conflict, a dispute, and etc., a fight. They don't have to be Grand Ayatollah, but they have to be Mushtahid. Sahlul <laughs> Sheikhna. The other day when had a say his father the Irani passed away in London. Do you feel like that was a big loss for Ayatollah the UK community? Ayatollah said Father Milani was a great scholar, was a great man with magnificent <coughs> manner. I met him several times. Mm. He wrote uh, too many books. He had very good akhlaq. And he was really a great scholar, I believe. And he sacrificed to migrate to London. Mm -hmm. He was able to sit back in Mashhad or Qom and teach or go to Najaf and teach and be a great scholar, but he decided to go there to help people. It wasn't, he wasn't only uh, 
a scholar for London people or UK. I was a scholar for whole Europe, to be honest. Mm. So yes, I was a big lord, <coughs> big lost, I think. May Allah elevate his status and the status of all uh, deceased uh, scholars. <coughs> uh, yes, but if you have in your city somebody like that, it's a lot. Any problem that you have, you can go and tell him mm. and seek his uh, advice and gain some knowledge of him and etc. Rahmatullah. Yeah, I think every city around the globe needs at least a mujtahid. At least a mujtahid. And we don't have that. I remember I went to him and in Fatimiyah. Mm. I think I talked with him about Ma'arif. And then he told me, yes, two years ago you came or three years ago you came. And he gave me your books. And I look into them. I can remember I put them there. <coughs> and he pointed at the book. He was smart. And he used to pray Salat Jum'ah as well, apparently every week or most weeks and in Salat Jum'ah you have sermons and of course you want to talk about contemporary issues and that would would uh, really educate the audience yeah if they use him of course yeah. I haven't lived in London so I don't know whether they used to admire him that much or not but he was very respected scholar Rahmatullahi <coughs> alayhi. So, again, in other faiths, you can't see that uh, sensitivity in delivering verdict as you can find it in Shia Islam. It's about rules. Yes, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Okay, what's happened? Qadaullah wa qadrak. It's not like that. Yes, this man is not a good man or this man is a good man. How? That's it. He comes to the mosque. It's not like that. It's not like that at all. This lady is accusing her husband that he is slandering her. How? Can she prove that? Mm. Does she have any witness? Or she doesn't? And etc. We need to know. A claim is not enough. <coughs> You see some judges and some faiths and some, I don't know, um, even the jury system. Why they establish a jury system? Because they want to see that what the vast majority of people think about such occasion or such incident. <coughs> but this is not in accordance to knowledge. It's in accordance to what? what people think. So this is not haq and batil. Well, jury believe that this person is what? Is guilty. Why? Because when the thief entered his house, he tried to defend himself and he slapped her on his, uh, the thief on his face. And the thief uh, fell down and his head got broken. Here to show you be manslaughter. That's the thing. That's it. They say yes. The vendor, the house owner, is guilty. Using excessive force. What do you mean? <clears throat> so this is, you know, how people think. Okay. This is not Islam. Shia Islam is different. It's not about what the vast majority of people think and how they think. 
it's about what haq, what is haq, and what is but in accordance to evidence and knowledge. Or I can say in accordance to knowledge and evidence. So the whole jury system is not accepted in Islam because it's not that accurate. Yes, it can show you what people think and how they think. <coughs> and that's why even if the judge believe that this person is innocent, but the jury say that he's guilty, then the judge should rule against him. Should deliver his verdict against him. Isn't it, Sheikh Mahmoud's sister? Sah? But this is wrong. Exactly, based on facts, but they are not experienced on that field. So it will show you what people think and how they think, but it won't show you the haqq. It's actually it's very subjective to you, so a judge can overrule a verdict of a jury if the legal obligations have not been met. Hmm. That's, the, that's the rule. Yeah, but that's that, good, but, but that's it's not the, enough. But it's, however, it is mentioned it, that in that's that a second is very rare. Case. Exactly. It's the very judge secondary. can overrule the ruling if the criteria hasn't been met. May khalif. So, as you say, it's very rare. Correct. But the system, the whole system, relies upon jury. Yeah. <coughs> and saying that this person is guilty or not. While in Islam, even the, if, if a whole city, a whole country, everyone believes that this person is not guilty, but he's guilty, then he's guilty. Or if they believe that this person is guilty, but he's not guilty, then he's, he's not guilty. And the jury system would be uh, different in cities and cultures and etc. In according to this culture, nothing is wrong with that. And according to another culture, something is wrong. But in Islam, it's not about that. It's about laws. It's about laws. Whether you're in this country or that country, that won't make any difference. Can I interrupt you? Of course you can. I was you interrupted me too many times today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, you were correct. I, I went onto a big website and I saw once the jury returns their verdict, the trial <coughs> judge has no power to overrule. Okay. Thank you very much, Marhamad bin Asarina. <laughs> <laughs> now, even if uh, in rare occasions, the, the judge can overturn uh, the, the uh, verdict of, of the jury, I'm talking about the system. And they don't use uh, the jury system in normal cases. They only use that in, in criminal cases, apparently. Uh, which is, you know, which is good in a, in a way, but it's not about haqq again. Haqq is one thing. This is haqq. Haqq is one thing. Haqq cannot be changed by people's opinions. Um, in Islam... Like, isn't the um, the system a bit different? Um, relies on trust. Yani, for example, if someone commits adultery, and there's two witnesses only. Okay, mm. and those two witnesses are known to be just, and mm. no one knows them to be liars. The verdict mm. doesn't go through. Yeah, of course. Why is that the case? Even though that we know that these two people, they don't lie, and it's probably 100% that this person did actually... Because they don't have the, 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 the right to spy. Why they say four people when some, something is so obvious, mm -hmm. so four people saw it. Otherwise, they don't have the right to spy. That's why they should punish. Mm. If they saw something, they saw something. They don't have to talk about it. So again, it's haqq and batil. But so that's something else. So what you're saying is, 
It's better to stay quiet on, on certain things. Yes. Mm. And I don't think, even if there are four or five people ob- witnessing something like that, they have to go and witness before the judge. In some occasions, even if the judge, the Hakim Shah, asks them to witness, they can say, I'm not going to witness. Mm. Yeah. Only I can <coughs> s- remember, I can remember this occasion. Listen, it's very vast. vast. Mm. But I know that we have two types of witnesses. Sometimes I tell you, I want you as my witness. You are my witness, okay? That Sheikh Muhammad gave me this money. Or he tells you that you are his witness. And you accept to be witness. And then, لا يأبى الشهداء, Allah says, if a witness get called by court, they have to go and witness. But if I was here, and I, yes, I was talking, and suddenly I saw Ali gave some, brother Ahmed, his watch back. And then uh, uh, Ali tells me, okay, I want you to witness, to be my witness. I don't have to. But you didn't consider me as your witness. Mm. Trust me, I just saw it. It's good to go, but not necessary at this case. And that's why Imam Ali alayhi salam told Anas ibn Malik, didn't you hear the commander, uh, the, the Prophet, saying man kuntu mawla fahada alayhi mawla because the Prophet took them as witness فليبلغ الحاضر الغائب and he said no I can't remember Imam alayhi salam told him then inshallah yeah. you get so sick skin sickness that you cannot hide it straight away he got a vitiligo on his nose that he wasn't able to hide it so the Prophet took them as witness, stopped them, and told them, I need you to be my witness. And they accepted. So only the occasion where you'd have to actually... Probably some other occasions as well. Mm. I'm not saying... But sometimes, I don't have to go. In some occasion, I don't need to go. Mm. Even if they, I, I get asked by the... the yes, uh, in blood, uh, if someone sheds the blood, and I saw that, of course... That's sensitive. I have to witness. But normal occasion as a watch, Apple watch. I don't believe in Apple system. So what? Whether he gave it back or not. For instance, yani. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah. Allah. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam.